Hello lovelies. First of all, apologies for the um, bare white face. Um, as I do from time to time, I've been feeling a bit bored with my makeup, so I thought I might have a go at doing something else. And I thought that I would uh, film it and have a chat and a catch up while I was at it. A couple of things have changed with regards to my face base. First of all, I've been using the Nivea Men Aftershave Balm as a primer. Um, I've been doing it about a month now. I ran out my previous primer, which was Barry M, and I thought I'd give it a try as I'd seen it all over the beauty vlogs. I didn't think I had anything to lose. It was £2.95 in Superdrug for a 100ml bottle. And if it didn't work out particularly well, I could give it to Hubby and he could use it as an aftershave balm. I have to say I'm very impressed. Makeup stays on, my skin feels great and it's very cheap. I don't put a moisturiser on first, otherwise it's just oil slick um, and nothing stays put. And I still use my white um, primer around my eyes just to make the eyeshadow pop. But as a primer, it's really good. My skin's been really nice. And the other change is my foundation. Something else that's been all over the beauty vlogs is the Dermacol foundation. I thought I would give that a try. Two reasons. First of all, I'm always on the hunt for a really good full coverage foundation, as you know. And second of all, it's actually for Hubby. He's in the movie business and uh, he is quite heavily tattooed on his forearms and there's been a number of times where he's come home from work absolutely slathered in really thick gunky grease paint where they've had to try and blot out the tattoos for whatever shoot he happened to be working on the stuff is a nightmare to get off and if it's really late when he gets home he just can't be bothered to take it off so he goes to bed with it still all over his arms and it ends up all over the sheets and everything else and it's a nightmare to get out of that. So I thought I would try the Dermacol for myself. Um, and if it was any good for me, try it on Hubby to see if maybe it was an alternative for covering up his tattoos. The face that you see before you now is Dermacol. I chose the palest one. I know the range is quite limited. When I first got it, I completely overestimated how much I needed. I put about a pea-sized blob onto my little palette do um, and uh, I ended up throwing half of it away because I just didn't need that much. What I've got on my face and my neck is about a grain of rice's worth. This stuff is incredible. It goes on forever. Um, pretty good courage coverage rather it is buildable but I quite like a sort of semi natural ish look I tried it out on hubby's tattoos obviously completely the wrong shade for him he's quite swarthy quite dark but a very small amount completely covered the darkest of tattoos and it went a very long way so very impressed with this stuff now by the end of the day, it is sitting in my smile lines and in the creases around my nose. But to be fair, Monday through to Thursday, my makeup is going on about quarter to seven in the morning. I go to work, come home, have lunch, go back out to work. And I'm coming home about half past nine, ten o'clock, at which point my makeup comes off. And you show me a foundation that is not sitting in smile lines and nose creases by that time of night. Um... No, I really am very impressed and for the price, you know, I think it's excellent. At the moment, I'm kind of half using that and half using my Rimmel Stay Matte. Um, but no, I'm extremely impressed with the Dermacol. So let's get on and uh, I will catch you up with what else has been happening. If you see that I am not looking directly into camera, it's because I'm kind of trying to use either the mirror or my little handheld mirror to to do whatever I've decided on my face. So a quick slurp of tea and I will be back with you. What else have I been up to? Well, if you follow me on Instagram 
And if you don't, please do. It would be lovely to have you come along. Um, my Instagram details are in the end credits and I'll also put the link down in the description box below. You may have noticed that I have been back on the woodworking thing. Um, this time in Hubby's van. Now, we have a van for two reasons. The first one is that we've got a huge amount of stuff that we have to take off on our medieval adventures with us. And the other one is because, as I said, Hubby works in movies and in TV. Now, even though we live in South London and most of the studios are either West or Northwest London, not really that far. In order to get to those studios, Hubby has to go through three or four of the worst traffic hotspots on the M25. It's a real pain. And a journey that should really only take an hour can sometimes take three hours or even four hours if there's a lot of traffic, um, particularly around the Heathrow Spur um, and the M40 junction, the M3 junction, it, it can just take him forever. And if he's got a run of days, so he's on the same job for, you know, a number of days, it seems quite pointless him getting up at silly o'clock in the morning to drive all the way to the studio, do a 12 or 14 hour day and then drive all the way home again just to go to bed for a few hours to get up the following morning and do it all over again. So we bought the van. so that he could keep in the back of it which was fine if it was just a few nights it seemed to be okay he basically had a futon mattress in the back of the van it was fine but as he's got better known in the business He's been getting more jobs further away and for longer runs, which is great, but sleeping on a mattress in the back of the van is not really conducive to a good night's kip, waking up feeling rested. I don't like that. Let's get a shot of that. So when we replaced our van at the beginning of this year, I confess I was on at him somewhat to um, let me do a full on stealth camper job on it, which he has resisted quite profusely. saying that really the jobs that he was doing was only a couple of nights it was fine. Wasn't hugely happy, I have to say, with this, but, you know, at the end of the day, it was down to him. But, week before last, he was on a job five days on a job. The call times were either 4.15 or 6.15 in the morning. He wasn't finishing until seven o'clock at night. So he was in the van for five nights and it was quite cold, it has to be said um those particular nights and when he came home he was sort of complaining a bit about not having slept well and having been cold so the bedding all needed to be washed um the duvet covers came off the duvets and uh, the duvets got hung up in the back of the van 
to air out unfortunately it was hissing it down with rain all day saturday so we weren't able to get the duvets out into the garden to give them an airing but at least they hung up in the back of the van but when i took the uh bottom sheet off the mattress i felt the mattress and it was just a bit clammy is really the best way of describing it the mattress was clammy am i liking this no i'm not okay let's get rid of that try again obviously in um you know he's, he's basically in a tin can so there's going to be condensate and he's going to be sweating in bed and because the mattress is just straight on the floor there's no way for it to air out and you know he's a bloke what you know, he doesn't think about airing beds out and silly things like that so at this point i'm afraid i confess i decided to completely override overall his objections and get a bed base into the van so at least the mattress could be up off the floor and it could air out and also you know that air gap underneath is going to make you going to make things a bit warmer for him so I confess I didn't give him an option. I just decided I was going to do it. Now, if you've seen any of my medieval makings videos, you will know that I have built wooden frame beds for a number, mem number of members of the household over the years. And it so happened that as we've gone up in the world and traded up our bed, we passed our bed on to someone who passed their bed on to someone and so on and so forth. And we ended up with um, a spare bed frame. It is a single bed frame and it is a bit cobbled together. I think it was my first attempt many moons ago. But... It was surplus to camp requirements. Now, again, if you've watched my videos, my medieval makings videos, you will know that all the beds fit together using half barrel hinges. It's a really simple construction. very simple to do and uh, you know get an entire bed up in five minutes it's great so I figured that I could just use the same construction methods in the van and that's what I did so one side of the bed would be supported by the side of the van I just put a batten directly onto the side of the van. The van is um, lined with plywood, so I made sure that I screwed the batten into one of the actual supports on the inside of the van. The headboard I bolted direct to the bulkhead. And... Uh, the long side of the bed connects to the headboard using a half barrel hinge and I have put a leg on that side just to make sure that the weight is supported by the leg of the bed rather than the bulkhead itself because although I've screwed it in in about five places 
I'm not sure quite how secure they will be over time with that amount of weight on them. So I thought if I put a leg on the bed, then that would save any issues later on. The foot of the bed, you will see, is not the full width of the bed because it attaches to the wheel well. Um, so part of the slats at the foot end of the bed is actually supported by the wheel well and the foot of the bed has got um, legs on it as well, again to support the weight. And then the side of the bed just drops in at the head and foot on the half barrel hinges. It's really easy. It also means that if we want to use the van for anything other than kipping in the back of it, it will come out very, very quickly. How's that? How's that looking? Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad, quite like. So I'm going to shut up and endeavour to get the other side to match this and I'll be back in a minute. So I'm back. Um, hmm. I made the mistake of not setting the liquid eyeliner with eyeshadow after having applied it. I shall do that now and of course as always happens with these things I didn't manage to get the two sides to match exactly but you know it's a first run so we learn from our mistakes where was i ah yes i was then so i got the bed up which was great um it meant that there was slightly more floor space because whereas before the mattress went between the wheel wells it now went right over one side, so there was a little bit of space on the edge. And it also meant that uh, Hubby's kit bags and stuff, instead of being down at the end of the bed, could now go under the bed, which was great. The only thing that Hubby pointed out was that whereas before he would put his little gas heater up on the wheel well he now couldn't do that because the bed was actually resting on it so i have also installed a little shelf onto the back door so that was that done and off hubby went Tuesday night for a six o'clock call Wednesday morning and I had a text message waiting for me when I woke up Wednesday morning. Oh my God, it's so comfortable, it's so warm. Yes, I informed you thus. He was so comfy and so snoogy warm that he nearly overslept and missed his call time completely which would not have gone down well. So, bed and little shelf was a complete success. Having resisted all previous attempts to turn the van into a stealth camper, he's now loving it. Thank you. One thing I did manage to persuade him also to do was to put a hot water bottle into his bed as he left the house so that when he arrived at his parking spot his bed would already be warm so you warm up much better don't you if you're in a warm bed but that also meant that if he was going to be staying anywhere for any length of time and he wanted a hot water bottle 
you would need something to heat the water on. So our little gas camping stove has gone into the van as well. And if you've got hot water, well, you can make yourself a cup of tea, can't you? So tea making stuff has gone into the van and a mug has gone into the van and um, a couple of pasta mug shop things has gone in and cover suits have gone in and instant porridge has gone in and the bowls and the mugs in which to make all of those things have gone in so he's got a little box with his kitchen type stuff in some kitchen wipes to clean these things out with and he's also got another box which has got um shower gel and toothpaste and you know headache tablets and antihistamines and spare inhalers and stuff and it's all in a box rattling around in the bottom of the van so he also wanted a means of um, storage for his asthma pump and his phone and stuff like that that could go close to the bed so he's got easy access to them so jumped onto eBay and managed to find what is actually a cutlery drainer so I put the hooks in and then I hung it up at the top where the high top roof meets the body of the van I have since been informed that it fits perfectly on the edge of the bed so he actually has it attached to the bed for a very easy access I still don't like that eyebrow shape went off down to Halfords and bought a couple of boot tidies just netting bags which are designed to hook onto the upward struts of a headrest but they work rather well because they hook up again where the high top of the roof meets the sides of the van gone from simply keeping in the back of the van to having a decent stealth camping Wait. I'll shut up finish this stick it on fast forward for you because you don't really need to be watching this at its slow speed, do you? No. So I'll shut up and get on with it and uh, speak to you in a bit. This is the makeup done. I'm really not sure, you know. Um, it's a it's a classic standard kind of goth eye makeup look, and I've always stayed clear of it because my eyelids are actually quite hooded, and um, I'm concerned about my eyes looking kind of piggy and small. But there is a lovely lady on Instagram, Lady Bolin. Her eye makeup is very similar to this, not the same, but very similar. Um, and she inspired me to give it a go. Now. I will always take my wing up at the side rather than coming out because I am heavy lidded and I am concerned about looking even more so. Um, I'm not sure. What do you think, people? What do you think? I wonder if I've just got too much space here. Of course, the hair's not down or done yet. And that always makes a difference. So maybe I need to do the hair. So my hair, being newly dyed and freshly washed, is floof. And despite the application of texturising powder and volumising spray, 
I can't do a great deal with it. So this will have to do. But what do we think of the makeup, guys? It might be one that I have to just, you know, try a few times and live with it and see whether I like it. I was concerned that it would make my eyes look very small and I'm still slightly worried that it makes my eyes look small but it's it's not bad it's all right it's okay what else have I been up to having a bit of a clear out we were bought an Amazon fire stick in the summer and we had uh, Cody installed on it for us um, which means that we can get pretty much any film or TV series that's ever been released it's crazy that means that our four shelves of DVDs has now been culled somewhat now there are some DVDs that I will not get rid of regardless of uh, how many times they appear on the television or how easy it is to get on Cody I'm not getting rid of my Harry Potter and despite the fact I don't actually watch the films very often I am obsessed with the making of the Lord of the Rings all those appendices I will sit and watch those for hours so we've kept those kept the Star Trek kept the Star Wars um, but had a big cull and it's quite funny some of them were like worth a penny or ten pence but hey it's money in the pocket and and it means that we free up space in the front room I'm currently in the process of doing the same thing with my CD collection we've got shelves of CDs and although I do love listening to music and I do listen to music a lot I mostly listen to it on my computer or on my phone I don't play CDs very often and um, yeah some of these things aren't worth a great deal of money but I don't care I've had a lot of pleasure out of them over the years and you know 35p in my bank account is better than nothing so it will all add up and we'll put the money towards something Assassin's creed -y, I suspect. I was planning on redoing my bustle tutorial. Um, a couple of comments quite rightly stated that it wasn't particularly clear what I was doing. Um, so yeah, I was going to redo that. And I did actually do a charity shop recce today in the hopes of finding the materials to do that for you. Unfortunately, I came up blank. So as soon as I get the bits and pieces that I need, I will be redoing my bustle tutorial video for you. I have picked up a couple of other bits and pieces, however, and I've got a couple of new items to show you as well. So I will be doing a video on those in the not too distant future. In the meantime, drop me a comment. Do you like it or do you not? Or should I do something else with it? Who knows? So I was just about to take this lot off when I figured that I would try just adding a bit of colour to it. Um, and I decided on red because I've got red lipstick. So can you see? literally two millimeters of red above and below and extended the wing using the red and it's made such a difference and suddenly I like it I really like it so yeah what a difference a little bit of color can make who'd have thunk anyway until the next time take care bye